Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R650 server. In this video, we're gonna specifically focus on RAID. Let's get going. Hey, thanks for stopping by today. It's a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R650 server. Do us a favor, find anything that helps you in this video, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, we'll top in. Now, this video is gonna be specifically dedicated to RAID. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna start by putting up a comparison chart that's gonna let you know the Dell approved RAIDs. Technically, there's some other RAIDs like LSI and some other cards that will work. And if there's something that you like, hey, do, do us a favor, drop a comment down below, let the other users know. But what we're gonna focus on are the Dell approved RAID cards. We're gonna show you a comparison chart that lets you know the cache, the speed, the PCI Gen version, if it's hardware if it's software so a nice just little chart to compare the different rates to let you know hey which one might work best for your application and then what we're going to do is show you how to physically install the raid we're going to be installing the front raid uh, there are technically two raid versions there's the front and the pcie we're going to be installing the front the pcie is pretty obvious and uh, pretty easy to do. You just pop into the PCIe slot and run the cable and you're good to go. Um, and then we're gonna do at the very end, we're gonna show you how to configure RAID 5 and we're gonna have screen captures with step-by-step -step instructions the entire way. So yeah, there's gonna be a lot going on in this video. So let's go ahead and hop into the good stuff. All right, let's throw up the RAID comparison chart. So you'll see we're starting off with the S150 onboard software. We have uh, H345, H355, H745, H755, H755N, which is a hardware NVMe RAID. There's H840, HBA355E, HBA355I, and all these are gonna be great options. And if you look at our chart, it's gonna again show you the different RAID levels, if it has cache, the drive speeds, the PCI gen, and if it's hardware or software. So hopefully this is a good chart just to start off for you guys to let you decide, hey, which RAID is the best RAID for my server and for my application. All right, so now what we're gonna do is show you how to install your RAID, but before we do, I'm gonna grab my ESD gear. Be right back. All right, safe to work on the machine. I have my ESD gear on. So the first thing I wanna do is lay out a couple of RAID cards for you, and you will need to make sure that you have the housing. So we're gonna install this one, uh, but the housing is, is fairly simple. It's literally just a four screws that will go in. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory, but if you don't have the housing, it is something that you will need. So in order to install our RAID, what we're gonna need to do is remove our top and then we're going to need to remove this piece right here so there's two little arrows just going to pull it back slide it back and then it's going to lift this up and then we are going to install our raid right here but in order to do this uh, there's a couple things that are going on here there's really not a lot of space here it's a very very tight squeeze so what we recommend is actually to remove the back plane so if you squeeze this right here the black plane will come up and to me it's a little bit easier to work on the back plane when it's up about right here ish maybe a little bit higher um, but you can essentially just take this out it hooks in down here um, you do need to be careful because there's cables and everything's still hooked in here uh, you got a cable right here so you do need to be very careful but if you have it about right here it'll be more than enough space so what we're going to want to do here is essentially hook these two black points into the, the post here and then the housing is going to go under this not over it and then the screws will screw into it so that's essentially all that we're going to need to do and this piece right here will clip in over here and that will be the connection for the raid controller to the back plane and what we're going to need to do here is go ahead and hook up our drives to start so we're just going to go ahead and do a first and these are just going to click right in so we're going to do A first, we're going to come over here and do B, so just line this up, click it in, and then once we're done, this is where we need a little bit of extra room, so we're going to go ahead and pull this back up just a little bit, and again it's kind of a tight squeeze, so hopefully my hand's not blocking too much of the, the video view here. So I'm going to pull this up about right here. So that I can get the RAID controller under. Oops. I get the RAID controller under, and we're just going to slide this right in. And again, that's why I kind of do it up because it's a tight squeeze. Once you get it right there, you can just click it into place, and we're good to go. And then we're going to go ahead and rehook our back plane back on and clip it into place. So it clicked in there. So just simply screw this down. So that is how you would install your front radio controller. 
Uh, it's not a super easy thing to do, but it's not super hard to do either. Uh, it does take a, a little bit of work, but it's definitely something that you can, uh, can do at home and can make it work. Now I'm gonna slide this back under here as well because this popped out. Just get this back into place. All right, so now that we've installed our RAID controller, the next thing that we're going to do here is we're going to show you how to configure RAID 5. And again, installing the RAID controller, uh, while it was a little difficult, it wasn't really that hard. It's definitely something you can do at home and videos like this will definitely make it easy for you to know the exact steps to do. So now we'll show you step-by-step -step instructions on how to configure RAID 5. All right, so now we're gonna show you step-by-step -step instructions on how to configure RAID 5 with your 15th gen server. Now, RAID 5 is one of the most common configurations out there. It will require a minimum of three hard drives and do make sure that your controller does support RAID 5. During post, you're gonna to wanna to press F2 and this will take us to system setup. Once you get into system setup, you're gonna to go to device settings. Within device settings, you're gonna find the hardware that's installed in your server. Here you will select your desired RAID controller. Select main menu. In the main menu, you're gonna select configuration management and go down to create virtual disk. So what we wanna do now is select the RAID level that we want. In this case, we're gonna select RAID 5. We're gonna leave unconfigured capacity selected. So now we're gonna click on select physical disks. On this menu, check both for the select media type option. Then we're gonna select all the drives that we wanna configure in our RAID. Select apply changes, then click okay. On the create virtual disk menu, click on create virtual disk. Click on the confirm box and click on yes, and then okay. To confirm the RAID was created, head back to the main menu, then select virtual disk management. And you'll find here that we've configured RAID 5 to our virtual disks. Congratulations, you've successfully configured RAID 5. Well, hey, if you found this video helpful, do us a favor, click that like, smash that subscribe. And if you're looking for any custom built Dell, HPE, Supermicro, IBM, Cisco, we would love the opportunity to earn your data center or earn your home labs business. Please email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. Thanks for stopping by guys, take care.